A few months ago, I asked you to go to model3tracker.info and tell us what kind of configuration you want for your Model 3. I'm excited to now report that we have almost 10,000 people that have done this, and I'm here today to dig into that data and see what are the most popular features. What options do you want on your Model 3? Hey, I'm Ben Sullins, and thanks for joining me here on Teslanomics, the show where we decode the economics behind Tesla. That's looking at the data and the facts and figures instead of just the appearance and flashiness of this company that's making such a big impact on our world. And today, I'm looking at Model 3 configuration data specifically. So the Model 3 is coming out very soon. It's only a few weeks away from production starting, and we're gonna know all the details very shortly. But just before then, I thought it would be really interesting to see of the 10,000 or so of you that have submitted your info, what have you decided as the most popular options? And look at that comparing to the price and seeing what you may actually pay when you take delivery of it or when you put your configuration in. Now because I'm not the biggest expert in the world on the Model 3, I invited my friend Trevor from the Model 3 Owners Club to join me in this episode where we take a look at each different feature and what is the most popular and talk about them in detail so you can not only see what other folks are saying but also get a bit of education about what we know as of now regarding what will actually be available for the Model 3 when the configurations open up here in a few weeks. So let's dive into the data now and see what people are saying about their configurations. So hey Trevor, thanks for joining me and uh, helping me understand what's going on here with all the different features on the Model 3. I thought since you were the Model 3 expert, uh, that, that the b most knowledgeable person I know, um, I would invite you on and we just kind of walk through what people are saying they're gonna get with their reservations and then just kind of talk through these features because I am a data guy. I am not super, uh, I'm not a super expert at this stuff. So um, yeah, let's just dive right into it. What do you think? Awesome, thanks for having me on. Glad to be here. Any way I can help. Great, great. So what I did is uh, I have on the screen here just the, a bar chart explaining the number of people that have said uh, which choice they're gonna, the, the, which option they want for each different feature and the number of people in the parentheses and the percentage that that number is of the overall responses. So we have almost 10,000 responses. And so you can see here the autopilot preferences. Uh, the most popular one is the autopilot convenience EAP um, with 35% of people responding for that. Uh, so what does that mean to you, EAP? Do you know, <laughs> does this make any sense? <laughs> well, it, it stands for Enhanced Autopilot, and that's the basic autopilot features, lane keeping, safety features, um, you know, uh, summon and stuff. The other one, which is the self, the full self-driving, is the level four and the level five autonomy. And now that's really not coming for some time. So uh, I'm in that same camp, uh, the, the Enhanced Autopilot. is more interesting to me. The, the nice thing about it, though, is that it is a software update. So even if you buy the car without autopilot, you can always upgrade at any time. And when the full self-driving comes, you can upgrade to that too. So you're not having to necessarily put all the cash in all at once. Gotcha. So these folks are saying, 35% of people are saying that they they want to buy it with the convenience features, but 33% are saying full self-driving. Now, I know Tesla just recently released the um, some more specs about the Model 3, and it listed full self-driving, right? Correct. And yeah. do, do you think that that's all that will be available or will that also include the uh, EAP version, just the basic yeah. convenience features? Okay, well, if, if you look at the current tiers right now with the Model S, uh, Enhanced Autopilot is the basic level mm -hmm. and then full self-driving is a separate add-on. Uh, when they say full self-driving, uh, I'm probably at this point believing that it, it will be at least starting uh, on launch, it will be the same tiered system. Okay. Uh, but they're, you know, when the full self-driving comes, uh, maybe they'll have one bundle uh, you know, the biggest question at this point is the price. You know, how much is this thing going to cost? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is. And I think, what is it on the S and X? It's like 8,000, I think. Um, yeah, I don't have it in front of me. I can look it up. Uh, that's okay. We can figure it out. I, I do have uh, a pricing model built into my, my uh, 
my uh, dashboard here at the end that we can kind of see because the uh, you know the guys at model 3 tracker.info came up with their own pricing model based on snx averages and stuff like that so mm -hmm. okay cool so and then 18 percent of people say no convenience features and then 14 percent undecided undecided so it sounds like uh this people will be uh well taken care of from what we know today it's a desirable feature yeah yeah now let's take a look at the battery because i think this is a big one so 41% say large battery, 27% say base, 20% say medium. Uh, are we going to have a medium sized battery? No. no. Two. There's two. And what do we know? Less, Those, less options, remember. <laughs> that's right. So so this is a good news for this is good news for Tesla because as I understand it they're going to make the the same strategy here, right? They're going to make the larger batteries first as far as you know everything I know. Um if you look at the history uh, of, of Tesla and the way they work, uh, irrespective of what Elon has said in the past, um, they're going back to their roots and how they started with the Model S and trying to do simpler configurations first. They don't want another repeat of the Model X. So, you know, most of the manufacturing on the Model S when it first came out was really geared towards the larger battery pack, you know, the 85 kilowatt. They did have a 60 and they did have a 40, but the 40 was a 60, it was software limited. That was the first instance of them doing some kind of software limit. Um, so yeah, 85 really came out first and they focused on that for a few months and then they started coming out with a 60. So yeah, this is just typical, uh, you know, Tesla mm -hmm. behavior. And, and we're looking at what, 75 we think for the large battery? Yeah, that's pretty much the consensus. 75 on the high end and 60 on the low. All right. So it looks like the the crowd will be pleased with this one. <laughs> well, battery packs is, you know, with an EV is really the best place to put your money yeah. because it gives you the range. And if you live in a colder climate, it helps mitigate some of the range loss in the winter months. Yeah. And I, I also heard that in super hot climates, you have issues with the with it as well. Well, temperature management is critical with lithium-ion batteries. So anybody with a, a Nissan Leaf, for example, lives in a hot climate, knows very well uh, that battery degradation is a real thing. Yeah. And, you know, this was the thing when I was looking to buy an EV that uh, I didn't know. But now that I have one, uh, I am I, like I try to tell everybody this. If your car, like, like a Nissan Leaf says 80 miles per charge, you're not likely to get 80 miles. Like really you're pushing 75 at best because you don't want to run out for one. And there may be things like it's a hot, super hot day or super cold day, or you're going up hills and it takes more energy or you're stuck in traffic. It's like when they put out those numbers, those are like ideal, you know, yeah, driving on a flat road at 70, 70 degrees outside or mm -hmm. what, what would it be? 23, 24 degrees up in Canada. Well, you know, uh Gasoline cars suffer from the same thing. It's just not as noticeable. You, you notice it more on, on, on an EV. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the charger category um, to me doesn't make sense. So what is this? What, what are people looking for here? And they're undecided, so I guess they don't know either. <laughs> well, this information is coming from the fact that um, the Model S, you can order it with... Uh, well, it's changed recently, but you, you used to be able to order it with a, a built-in single charger, and then they had, at the time, early on, a, uh, a, a double charger or, mm -hmm. or, or, or second charger on there that would uh, bring the charge rate up to 72 amps or so. And uh, when the Model X came out, they did away with the dual chargers, and they had either a single 48 amp or a onboard 72 amp as an optional thing. Of course, that's the same thing with the Model S. So they're just taking those same things and applying it to the Model 3. My personal belief is is that we will get a single onboard charger. It'll be probably the 48 amp, which is standard on the Model S. So it's interesting information, but I think a lot of this stuff is going to have to be revised when the when the 3 finally comes out. I mean, it's all about less features less things it's the model 3 really is a is a program and cost reduction mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. simplified okay yeah. so people won't be too upset if they don't have options obviously 45 percent of people are not not undecided so now we get into some more of the subjective things uh -huh. um so and the decor as we know is kind of a hot uh, button issue for a lot of people uh -huh. um 46 percent here i mean almost five thousand people say that they're undecided so why are so many people so up in arms about this yet <laughs> so many people here are saying that they kind of don't care 
Well, I think it's two parts. Uh, one of them is the unknown nature of the interior. Now, I'm a firm believer that what we saw at the Alpha or, or the reveal last year with the Alpha cars is exactly what is going into production. The uh, pictures of the uh, production candidates driving around really bore that uh, bear that out. Um, the other part of it, I think, is is we still don't know the interior color combinations of this car. Now, if you've been paying attention, uh, Tesla with the Model S and the Model X have been reducing the amount of, of interior options on the car, uh, how many ways you could configure it. Now they're preset packages. Um, I believe with the Model 3, we're going to see exactly the same thing. We might get three interior color options. I did have a source tell me that uh, white, tan, and black will be the seat color options. Now, how they combine it with the dash, uh, you know, with the wood trim, of course, we've seen with production candidates is still unknown at this point. Uh, so I think it, it's part of that. It's just still this unknown. And uh, we should have more information come July when the cars are finally shown and then the options on the configurator finally come up. Do, do you think that uh, we have to wait till July for the configurations to be released? For the general public, yes. Um, if they do open it up internally, as they said, for employees, maybe sometime in June, there is a good chance that might leak out. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I, I was kind of thinking that if they want to start production in July, um, that they would probably be releasing it late June at, at the latest, honestly. They need a several weeks to a month or so for um, projection planning. Keep in mind, the only variant in here, Ben, is because the amount of permutations on the configuration of the Model 3 are so much lower that it would probably make sense for them to actually start building preset configurations mm. and actually sending those out to holding you know lots and stuff so that when the configurator goes live or shortly thereafter, that when somebody places an order or they look and, and, and see, they could just call a local Tesla shop and say, yeah, we have that color. Why don't you just come pick it up? You don't have to order it necessarily. Right, right. So... Uh, you have to think about in those lines. They can build build some inventory up now, and exactly. and I have and been told that that is part of the plan. And, and maybe even in that sense, there's yeah, like the, the the configurations, the things that are really hard to change, like the interior color and the paint, something like that, which would require that maybe you just leave either minor changes or uh, things like um, uh, minor changes or things like that are software based, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you could. If you could keep that and have the car there, then somebody chooses it and boom, here you go, you know, two weeks, come to come pick it up or something. The production ramp on this car is so critical to them that that's why they've decided to start with simpler configurations first is that so, so that they can get the bugs sorted out and then deal with the harder stuff later on. Again, you know, Elon's been pretty obvious, uh, pretty vocal about the fact that they don't want another Model X situation. That car was just so complicated to build. It led to so many delays. They're going back to their roots with the Model S. Start simple, work your way up. Yeah, Makes he sense. he, he uh, didn't he say he was an idiot with the with the X or something? <laughs> yeah, that was a tweet that was put out. That was quite funny. <laughs> he has a good sense of humor, which is fun. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look now. This to me is the biggest issue. Uh huh. So why 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 is this an issue for Model Three reservation holders? Well, it's it's apparent that there's a lot of there's a considerable amount of people out there that are uh, G-force junkies, <laughs> as I call them. <laughs> uh, the all-wheel drive. Um, if you've experienced a car with all-wheel drive for performance, it's it's astonishing. Um, is yours a, a rear-wheel drive or all-wheel drive? Mine's rear-wheel drive. Yeah. So you know that uh, the performance is pretty darn good. A good friend of mine has a rear-wheel drive. <laughs> oh, it, it's in, it's. Yeah, it's out of this world. Uh, a friend of mine has a P100D, and I drove that, and I was uh, as terrifying. fast. Uh, yeah, as fast and as insane as my car is, his car was wasn't even in the same class. It was a completely no, it's different a, animal. It's a terrifying car to drive. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's part of it's it's two parts. Um, part of it is you know you've got the the adrenaline G-force junkies that really want the higher performance, and then there's a significant amount of people out there that want the all-wheel drive for uh, inclement weather conditions, like in like here we you know we get snow, mm -hmm. and uh, you know for the traction control it's certainly a worthy option. Um, I would consider it, but uh, again, it's it all boils down to you know the pricing at the end of the day, and of course, you know we know that the timing is not 100% because they're starting with rear wheel drive first, and they're going to do uh, all wheel drive sometime in early 2018. Yeah, and you know at, at first when I saw this data, I thought, oh wow, Tesla's in trouble. If 60% of the people want a wheel drive and they're not making it, that's a problem. 
But then I started to think, okay, they said they're going to release it to, obviously employees get first dibs, then uh, current owners, then it goes, if I understand correctly, current owners in California. And so there aren't too many places in California where the inclement weather is going to be an issue. Right. Well, it, again, it's it's part of the production ramp, as you're you're right. You know, the geography and their plans dictate um, that it makes sense to go this way first, so they can work out the bugs. Mm -hmm. And once they do, then they can start adding features. I mean, some of the stuff. I mean, I'm a firm believer that there's probably going to be more options later on. Right now, they're just starting with you know the the bare minimum that they can get um, to actually get going on this. Yeah. So, issue or non-issue that 60% of the people want a wheel drive. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I think there's probably some of the population that will say, I, I don't care, I need the car right away and I'll just do away with it. Mm -hmm. Other ones are like, well, I'll just be patient. I, you know, I'm in Canada and, uh, you know, we're, where I am in Toronto, we're more on the East Coast of side of things. So if their geography and their production plans still hold true, we may still not see cars until the spring. So for us, it, yeah. it may not be an issue. And, and my friend that has the P100D, it's the same thing. He lives in Utah where it snows. And, and in fact, that is why he got it because he couldn't have a rear wheel drive car. Just driving in the snow, it just doesn't make sense. Now, <laughs> later he told me that the tires and, the, and there are other ways to handle that, but the dual motor is, is kind of a, a, a deal breaker if he couldn't get it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, th I don't think it'd be a big deal, but like you're saying, you know, we'll see kind of as as more options come out and more info, so. Okay, drivetrain. Um, are we gonna have a performance version? Uh, well, if we believe what Elon said, not until sometime next summer. Okay, so, but Ludacris uh, is an option, or? Well, he did tweet that that was going to be something that they were going to do, and that's usually tied to the performance option. So again, we're, if, we, if it's gonna happen, we won't know until next year. I, I think this graph is actually super telling because it, it, it set, to me, the message here is that people that want this car are in large part very practical about it, right? And, and that, that probably the price that you'd have to pay to add these other features is not not really like the ideal target uh, audience, right? It's probably, you know, the S and the X, you know, with, the, with those, that's where it's like, hey, I'm already spending $100,000 on a car. What's an extra 10 grand or whatever? Here, <laughs> to me, this sounds like, Oh, you know, like, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's pretty apparent here that Tesla is, at this point anyways, trying to make a very clear definition between, you know, the Model 3 and the Model S and having very clear, uh, you know, we don't want this car encroaching on the Model S. Now, that may change in the future, but for mm -hmm. right now, it's, it's very apparent that this is a Model S, just smaller, yep. less options, less costly. And let's yep. try and keep it like that as long as we possibly can until we need some kind of generation demand. And of course, you know, throw in more technology. It, I have to try to remember people that when the Model S first came out, there was no folding mirrors. There was no parking centers. There was no autopilot. Yeah. There was no, I mean, That's my car. All, like, exactly, <laughs> so you know firsthand. Yeah. Right. The things that they've added to the car in the future. And the Model 3 is not going to be any different. We just got to give it a couple of years so that they can add more features down the road. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, would you speculate that at some point down the road, we may have different versions of the Model 3? How do you mean? So, um, <clears throat> like, let's say you take a, a Honda Civic. There's like the EX, the LX, the SI, you know, it's like it's all a Civic, but there are different versions of it. You know oh, I see I mean? what so you're you, at. you could have like a, uh, yeah, I mean, not to say like a, a P90D or something like that, but you could have like a Model 3, which does have some of these you know, more upgraded features, uh, which is more of a premium version. So it's, it's almost like a small Model S. It has like all the same bells and whistles as the Model S, it's just smaller. Well, I think, you know, Tesla very much is a creature of habit. Um, and if you look at what they've done with the Model S, the main differentiator, really the biggest differenti differentiator with the car is, is the size of the battery pack and whether you have performance or not. Mm -hmm. uh, dual, you know, all wheel drive as well. So, I, yeah, no, I'm thinking that the Model 3 will follow along the same kind of pattern. It just may not get to the same crazy levels as the Model S because, you know, let's face it, it is a Model S is a premium car, generates a lot of money for them. It's a, yeah. it's a halo vehicle. So I, I think that we'll keep that over there. And the Model 3 is, you know, what they consider their mass market car. Gotcha. Uh, you know. Okay. Sub-Zero weather package. Now, 
I'm guessing that there's a bit of a bias in this sample because <laughs> 40% people wanting the Sub-Zero package to me says that they live in a very, in a cold climate. And uh, I just don't see, <laughs> considering 50% of all Teslas are in California, you know what I mean? That These numbers don't add up totally to me. <laughs> your, your seats are, your front seats are heated, Ben? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. The front ones are, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the same thing in Canada. Um, if you look at the sub -zero, uh, sub zero weather package on a Model S, it adds heated back seats, windshield wipers, um, and a heated steering wheel. And, um, you know, your plebeium, if you've never experienced a heated steering wheel, let me tell you. Um, <laughs> it, you know, the heated back seats, I, I do have that on my current Lincoln and never use it. Yeah. Heated steering wheel is really nice, but is it really worth spending, you know, whatever the money may be? Uh, I don't what, know. What, what would be the most useful feature? See, so I've never lived in a real cold climate. So like, but I understand like you have to come scrape ice off the windshield and there's all kinds of stuff that comes along with that. Okay. So you don't, you don't need the cold weather climate to do that because you can preheat the vehicle mm -hmm. um, to help with that. Now, wh when they say the heated windshield wipers, what it is, is it's a heating element similar to what you'd see on a car uh, on the rear window where it has the heating element you can oh, turn right. on. Right. And, and, and that's just right where the windshield wipers are so that it, they don't stick to the windshield if you have some uh, ice. Okay. So. Okay, gotcha. So I don't think this will be that big a deal, but I it did it did stand out to me like hmm, forty percent, <laughs> huh? That seems like that seems pretty high. Yeah. All right, now we get to the most probably diverse <laughs> choices of this data set, and I don't even know. I mean, these are all speculative whether or not we'll have all these colors, right? I mean, what? Oh, how seen many? Five so far. Five so far. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and we've got uh, besides undecided, not Six chosen. Six if you count signature red. Right. Right. And do you think that'll be available to the public? Well, if they painted a car like that and they're driving it around and testing it, I think they have intentions of doing something with it. And right. uh, I think it ties in with uh, Elon's promise to do something for early reservation holders. I, I have been thinking right when he made that tweet last year, uh, my thinking all along is that it would be the simplest thing for them to do would be some kind of special paint color. Mm -hmm. I never expected signature red because they said that they would never do a signature series on the Model 3, but it's a unique color and it kind of fits in with Tesla history. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's nice. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But the, the other base colors that we've seen so far, I mean, color choices are not necessarily something you make at the last minute. This stuff is decided, you know, kind of months in, in, in advance. And uh, it fits in with the color color scheme of the Model S and X, so it's a you know family resemblance. So it makes total sense. I don't think we're going to see necessarily gray or uh, you know pearl white. Maybe I mean, it's hard to determine from these release candidates to see exactly what color the white is. Yeah, um, I think it's simple. It's just going to be like solid colors. I'm a fan of the white. That's my my car. <laughs> I like white choice. cars. I have one now. Yeah. Okay. Now premium upgrades. Um, Will we even have this? I mean, we've been talking over and over about how it'll be a simple car. Not at launch. If they do anything, it may be added in the future, but at launch, we're not going to see anything. I, like I said, I we're going to see very, very few configuration variants on, at launch. Uh, a yeah. lot of this stuff is going to be added later. So, Yeah. I wonder if that's going to uh, force some people to sit and wait. You know, like if, I, if they want a specific thing and it's not ready, it's like, hey, okay, well, you got to wait. Well, there's a certain amount of people that were expecting having everything on a Model S just at half the cost. And, of course, that's just not possible. Mm -hmm. So I think that, yeah, if the people, uh, you know, you get a certain amount of populations that are going to sit there and think, well, maybe I'll just wait or maybe I'll just do the obvious. I mean, it's obvious I really wanted a Model S. Maybe I'll just go buy a Model S instead. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 All right. Now let's talk about the roof. Uh, the majority of people want the all glass roof, which is that the default option? Is that going to be the default? Um, I was believing that up until recently, and I still think that it's probably going to be the default. I mean, last year they talked about um, at the reveal event that they were going to do a metal, glass, and a sunroof. And, um, you know, with the Model S recently, they've simplified it. They got rid of the metal roof, so now glass is standard at no cost, and you have to pay extra for the sunroof. And, I, you know, with me, with Tesla, every time I look at what they do, the simplest answer is usually the correct one. <laughs> um, so, you know, my thinking was with the Model 3, uh, oh, they just did it with the Model S and that'll be the same thing with Model 3. So at launch, we may see glass option um, as being the only option. Metal might be standard. Sunroof might even, not even make the cut until a future version of the car. I, yeah. I have to remain open on this. Um, but yes, the all glass is certainly a very desirable uh, 
uh, feature of the cars. If you've seen it in person, it's stunning. It's like the Model X, right? I mean, better, uh, but the Model X is that giant windshield, right? That yeah, but put it on the back, and that's what the Model 3 looks like. If you've mm -hmm. seen the Model S, for example, with the all-glass roof and actually sat in it and look up, it's like, oh, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I would certainly get that on a Model, S, on a Model S. Yeah. Now, uh, will this... So, for me, one of the big things is the trunk. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I surf, and I know Elon has promised me that I could fit a surfboard in here, but with that trunk <laughs> that I saw at the reveal, I'm not, I'm not so confident. Um, well, you do have to remember the seats fold down in the okay. back. Not okay. all sedans have that. And, and so, matter of fact, I think at some BMWs you have to pay extra to get that. Yeah, 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 and Acuras as well. I'm from previous cars I've had. Okay. But but the deal there is um, the the reason I understand you can't have a hatchback is because of the all glass roof. That's correct. Um, if you see where the glass roof actually starts, which is actually just the head of the passenger compartment, mm -hmm. uh, you can't build a lift back on there because it would compromise some of the safety features of the right. car, you know, humidity on the roof. So, uh, you know, for them, it, you know, car design is a compromise on, on literally every level. You can't, there's no right. such thing as a perfect car. So yes, uh, they feel that the all glass, uh, the, the single piece of glass on the back is, is critical to design of the Model 3. Mm -hmm. So they had to think of something else. So, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if you look at the Alpha, uh, the Alpha cars, I mean, most cars that are, uh, have a small trunk in a sedan usually have a very short hinge point and it literally just tilts up like that. Yeah. Yeah. But the Model 3, what they've done, of course, is they've moved the, the hinge points of the, of the trunk up further on the C pillar. So what that would potentially afford is uh, a little bit larger aperture. Now, I, you know, there's been a lot of uh, talk on the internet, of course, uh, of Elon trying to follow through on this promise of making the trunk bigger. Mm -hmm. But I think people are misreading the tweet. Um, I think people have it in their minds that they've actually made the lid bigger, not the lid. It's the aperture inside. Once you open the lid, how big is the actual opening in the back? Yeah. And I think that the problem is we won't really know because not a lot of people have seen the Alpha and we don't have anything to compare against. And yeah, the Alpha, yeah. I mean, once a car goes in production, the Alpha is going to go into the, you know, the Tesla museum at the factory right. and, you know, probably never get opened again. So we won't really have any idea. I just have to trust that they've done the right thing and they've actually done something for the, uh, for the opening for us. Yeah, yeah, th that was my biggest, like when I saw it, it wasn't that there wasn't a ton of space. Like I understand it's a smaller car, like that all makes sense. It was the size of the opening, the aperture, mm -hmm. as you're saying there, of because of, that that often is the limiting factor. It's not that there's not room, it's that I can't get this, you know, box in there or whatever it may be. So hopefully, yeah, those changes you mentioned there will, will help with that at, at the very least. All right, let's talk seats. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. I mean, okay, most people are undecided. I honestly don't care. I mean, w w what do you think about seats? Is this going to be a big deal for folks? Well, there's two things with the seats. One is color and, and second is materials. Um, mm -hmm. Again, we don't know at this point whether uh, being a simpler car with less features, especially at launch, whether leather will even be an option. Mm -hmm. If they do the white, we know that's a vegan artificial leather. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually very soft. The, uh, the, the stain resistance doesn't seem to be an issue. It, blue gene transfer is a real thing. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people that have uh, some issues with it. Uh, my personal opinion is that if you keep on top of it, if you're a cleanly person, you you know, if you keep on top of it, it may not be so much of an issue. Or just stop um, wearing blue jeans. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. There's that. <laughs> um, my personal feeling, at, I think, at launch is that if we see if we see basic seats, black, tan, uh, those two, um, they may be some kind of variant on the uh, on the multi-pattern black. Uh, it's not fabric; it's a textile, mm -hmm. uh, which is actually very nice. And and it's uh, unless you can actually find a base Model S sitting on a on a, on a lot somewhere, it, it, because most of them when they're sitting in the showrooms have uh, leather seats. All the upgrades. Uh, yeah. yeah, most most people don't give them any thoughts because they think they're cloth, but actually it's a much nicer uh, texture, and they're actually very comfortable. Hmm. So I don't have any qualms about um, having multi-pattern seats in the Model uh, 3 to begin with. If mm -hmm. they offer leather, great. Again, cost might be a factor. Yeah. But uh, again, everything is hinging on launch and how many options they can offer and how quick they can get the cars out. So yeah, we'll have I, to wait and see. I, I'm with you. I, I, wouldn't, I don't think people would be disappointed if they had that multi-pattern textile. And I don't think people would care either way. Like it, it, it seems to me... If they had leather, that'd be cool. But if they didn't, 
it probably wouldn't be a deal breaker, you know? You, you get a lot of people that actually don't like leather uh, mm -hmm. and wouldn't even pay for it. Yeah. Uh, so what are your options at that point? Well, do you have a cloth seat or do you have something a little bit more premium? Yeah. And um, I would prefer to go the, the, the premium faux leather mm -hmm. rather than just having cloth. But that's my personal choice. I mean, sure, sure. Yeah. W when I got my S, uh, there were some, because I bought it used, there were some that had that original multi-pattern thing and i'd never never witnessed it but my initial thought was i'm buying a premium car i'm going to have premium seats like it to me there was just didn't make sense in this because we're not talking an s or an x yeah i could see it being like ah well hey you know the seats are nice that's it's not the that's not the the, the selling point mm -hmm. um people are okay with the standard sound this probably falls into the same category right like i, I think this would be an easy addition but the question is whether or not they care because it does Probably the bigger deal is like how how much harder it makes this to manufacture if you have an upgrade like this, right? I, I'm thinking this particular option right here, the sound system, is something that's um, probably going to stick with the S and won't be offered. Now, I have been told that the sound system in the in the Model Three um, has been tested. Uh, Tesla has very stringent uh, testing. Now, I don't know the quality. Um, I know for me, the base uh, sound system in a Model S is is perfectly adequate. Yeah, um, I'm not an audiophile, so it's not typically something I would spend money on. I mean, mm -hmm. you can buy third party sound systems for probably a lot less than what Tesla chargers would be much, much better. So, yeah, yeah. but I'm not a belief that this is going to make it. Uh, you know, that th that's a good point there. And especially where I live in California, people are all about tricking out cars and stuff mm -hmm. because the three is going to be so cheap. I could see people buying just the absolute bare bones version of it and then taking it to a shop and just going nuts, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, those are, those so yeah, younger crowd like that kind of thing. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm far too lazy and I don't yeah, care yeah. that much. Yeah. And I'm too old to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, are we going to have air suspension? This is a question I've got a lot um, on my channel. Um, are we going to have that as an option? I mean, OK, so 50 percent of the people say they don't care, but I'm just curious. What, what are your thoughts? Um, well, if you look at a Model S right now, it's tied to a little bit higher. You have to get into at least a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack to even be able to have the, uh, the suspension, the air suspension. My personal opinion, other than, you know, maybe a 1% extended range, uh, you know, from automatically lowering the car or the geolocation raising and lowering if you have uh, driveway problems, it's not an option that's really worth it in my books. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. I've experienced the car with it and I couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. So, but again, it, at launch, it's not going to be an option. There'll be coil only, yeah. and uh, air oh, suspension they, be added as a performance thing next year. They did. They did say that, right? Coil suspension. Yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's so, been yeah. confirmed. Well, when I released the sheet that was given to me, it wasn't on there, and then I think it was like literally a day or two later they updated, they updated. it with, with the more things on there. Yeah. Now, when I saw this one in the list, I was pretty surprised. Uh, that people uh, do you think this will even be an option um i believe having? so uh, yeah uh, well elon did tweet to someone um some months ago that um, having a roof rack on the car is, is something that's going to happen of course we've we've seen the uh production candidate driving around testing the roof rack on it so if yeah. he said that i'm i'm, uh, I'm believing that they're going to have um, have some kind of uh, tow hip hitch option on it now hmm. i have to caution though people that the tow hitch may not be necessary uh, necessarily for towing large trailers or campers it could be there just as something for putting bike racks on or something mm -hmm. we'll have to wait and see but uh, you know i believe it'll happen it, it again it may not may not be there at launch in the product mix right from the beginning because you mm -hmm. can order a model x now without the uh without the hitch and you can take it into a service center and actually buy it and have it installed after the fact uh, so okay. this is something okay. that may be uh, offered you know through the service center later on you, you know and, and that's a good point because there are some features that i'm aware of which must be chosen at uh configuration time because they're built like for example on the s the rear facing seats uh you cannot add Can't these added, after yeah, the exactly. fact mm -hmm. so it, th that would probably be a good strategy, right? Like, hey, we're gonna build the cars and you can choose all the options, um, or I'm sorry, you, you have to choose the options that can't be changed or added later, yeah, right? I believe, yes, exactly. So if you look at that product sheet on there where they say less than 100 permutations of the car, uh, my belief is is exactly what you're saying that these are, these are you can't change it after the fact, these are musts. 
Right. So those are the type of options. And I should mention too, that everything that they stayed on there in terms of the Model S are all physical things. It has nothing to do with anything that's software upgradable. Right. So anything that's software upgradable, you can't put it into the product mix because it's a it's a it's a non thing. It's mm -hmm. something that can be done later on. So you can't really count it as part of the variant on there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Now wheels. Standard. Two sizes. Two sizes. Uh, that's been that's been confirmed. Eighteen and nineteen inch. Eighteen. Wheels. Oh right, they put that on the thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, yeah, again, it, this goes, I guess this is total personal preference. Uh, um, I, I don't know, probably in the category of you, like, I, I don't really care that much. <laughs> well, I, I mean, anybody who has a, um, a Model S with the 21 inch wheels know that the ride is not as nice. It's not yeah. as smooth. Uh, the e eats through tires like crazy. So um, yeah, yeah, so I would caution people. At this point, it's only a one inch difference, so it may not matter all that much compared to say a two inch difference like you see on the S or the X. Mm -hmm. So uh, at this point, I think it's really gonna boil down to design. Like they, we've seen two designs on the wheels. Mm -hmm. So I think it really boils down to you know, I, which design you prefer. I actually currently have one, I think 21 inch and the rest are 19 mm -hmm. uh, because I have a loner wheel that they gave oh, me okay, okay. <laughs> and it looks funny it's like you have a black tooth or something it's like it's a two different color it's just all I, in fact it reminds me i need to call them and figure out where the heck my wheel is because <laughs> i cracked my rim hitting a pothole uh, yeah that they're kind of prone to that be you know being such a large car i've experienced yeah. that myself yeah. california you know okay so all said and done what i have here is based on the data um, all the features and the most popular choice. Um, you know, we just went through all these. And then um, of those that have what we believe to be an, uh, an added cost to them um, is what you see in there in the, the three different currencies. Uh, and the currency rate changes minute by minute. So depending on mm -hmm. when someone's watching this, you know, it, 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 I'll say this is a ballpark, <laughs> okay? Um, and things will, things will adjust slightly. And of course, these uh, costs are also speculation, you know, from the guys at model3tracker.info. So um, yeah, this is, this is based on the data, the most popular Model 3 configuration. Uh, anything here stand out to you? Not particularly at this point. It, the only the only situation, uh, that, or not situation, but uh, comment I would have to make is something that you know that Eline tweeted out that he figures that the average product mix um, on a Model Three, at least at launch, would be around forty two thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So, you know, and then you've got people that are thinking, well, just take the same Model S uh, prices uh, for options and, and apply that. Uh, my belief is that that's a safe way to go about it if you want for budgetary reasons. However, right. realities may dictate that being a mass market car, uh, you can't charge those kind of prices. Uh, paint, for example, uh, multi-coat red or something like that. I mean, here in Canada, it's a $2,000 option. Well, you can't apply a $2,000 option just for single paint yeah. on a $45,000, $46,000 car. It doesn't make sense. So you know, options based on on the car's commensurate base price uh, it really should work out a little better of course the economies of scale should hopefully keep the prices in check but mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. you never know with tesla <laughs> yeah <laughs> is it supposed to be a cash cow or are they going to eat some margins so that they can get it out the door now they did say that they want decent margins on the car but not at first because you know r d and, and tooling costs have to be paid back to a certain degree. exactly yeah yeah well, when i saw this uh and, and finally got you know this data pulled together uh it, it actually so i, I did some uh, some analysis on this data a while ago, and I was look looking at what people listed as their budget <clears throat> and compared that to what the cost, estimated cost was to see if how big of a gap there was, right? And and it actually matches up. So that was with, I think, four, or no, I'm sorry. That was with, I think, close to 8,000 responses. Now we're close to 10,000. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's holding steady for the U.S. price of around $50,000, um, which... I'm sure Tesla would be thrilled with because that would mean <laughs> that they're profitable or that hopefully they're profitable uh, to, to, or they have a good margin on, on a, the unit economics there. Um, I, I'm with you. I, I think that the assumptions that these guys have made with the cost per item is, is I mean, there's no way that they're going to be 100% correct, um, but that they're probably uh, conservative uh, on, on the side of kind of, the, they're erring on uh, being really high. So that way people are more pleasantly surprised, right? If you wanted That's this, yeah. <laughs> and and I, w when I first saw this, it actually jived with 
with what my expectations are and a lot of people I've talked to. They want autopilot, they want a big battery, um, and, and, and the all glass roof, right? The, the only thing that's not, that's different here is the all wheel drive, which um, I think people say they want because, but, but if it came down to it, I don't think they would, I think they would forego that. Is, is my guess. <laughs> well, there's a certain amount of people out there that have a lot of, there's a lot of pent up demand for this car. So yep. I think when it finally comes out and they get their number, I mean, some people will say, no, I want to wait because, you know, I'm ready to, you know, I, I don't want to compromise on my choices. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's a certain segment that is just, oh, man, I got to be first in line. I waited. I mean, I'm just going to get it right away. Yeah. So th those two sentimentalities will pretty much dictate, you know, which way they go. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. Well, uh, I really appreciate the time here. Um, and people can find you at, on your YouTube channel. And where else can they find you? Well, uh, one of the, I'm very active on Twitter and my handle's at Model 3 Owners. Uh, we also have a, a forum that's growing like crazy. It's model3ownersclub.com. And yeah, our YouTube channel is Model 3. There's uh, youtube.com forward slash model3ownersclub.com and then D-O-T spelled out. <laughs> That's yeah, the easiest you, way to find our channel. YouTube is kind of funky with uh, with that that whole URL thing, right? And like once you set it, you can't ever change it kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Well, hey, uh, keep up uh, the great work on all the content you're producing. I love watching it. I'm sure a lot of my audience loves watching it. And I hope if, they, if there's some new people here that haven't heard of you guys, that they go check you out and subscribe. And um, it sounds like we're going to be hanging out in San Francisco uh, pretty soon. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Friday, baby. That's right. So we'll get together and uh, yeah, share. I, I don't know if I'm going to record anything while there, but uh, it sounds like uh, collectively we're going to re be recording a lot. So yeah, uh, we'll keep that under half. We'll, we'll let people know what we're up to a little bit later. Yeah. Cool, man. All right. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. No problem. Thanks for having me on, Ben. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Cheers, man. So there you have it. The most popular options for the Model 3. And it looks like it's going to be around $50,000 as we previously had reported. So we'll see if the pricing model and all those things kind of shake out as we've predicted. Uh, but in the meantime, I'd love to know your thoughts. Uh, leave me a comment down below. Use any of the links in the description down there if you're curious about any of this stuff. And if you do have a reservation for a Model 3, please consider going to model3tracker.info and submitting it so we can get even better insights into this. So thanks for joining me yet again, and I'll see you back here next time.